I'm Vicki Hogarth and welcome to Southwest Magazine. Today's guest changed the political landscape of New Brunswick forever when he started a new party, the People's Alliance, in 2010. Ten years and three seats in the legislature later, People's Alliance now holds the balance of power in Higgs minority government. Meet People's Alliance leader Chris Austin. Chris? Great to be here. It's nice to meet you. I feel like I don't actually know that much about you but I'd love to know how you got interested in politics and how you started a political party, the People's Alliance. Sure. So um, I've been in politics for quite a while, even as a young person growing up. Um, my dad was always very active in politics. Um, I kind of got it from both sides. I always used the joke that my dad was a strong PC and my stepfather come from a liberal family, liberal background, so, you know, we're kind of getting, you know, taste of both worlds. Um, but it actually was in 2010, um, it was a potential sale of NB Power to Hydro-Quebec. That's when I think the party was basically formed around that. Um, not so much the deal itself of whether it should be sold to Hydro-Quebec. Uh, we opposed that, but it was more about the way government had done it. You know, there was no real consultation with people. It was a surprise to everybody. It's just the government of the day came out, laid the memorandum of understanding down and said, look, uh, you know, we're, we're going to sell your crown utility. And, of course, the people in New Brunswick went, crazy as they should have and uh, that kind of helped us foster more of a representative type of political party that's why we're, we're a political party uh, People's Alliance had, is based on a free vote system mm -hmm. so Rick and Michelle which uh, joined me as a caucus in the legislature they know um, that when they vote they can vote based on their represent based on their constituents wishes mm -hmm. and uh, unless the only time where I whip the vote is if it's a confidence motion so if it's it's whether government will fall or stand uh, we need some consistency in that. You don't want to have an election every six months or, or every year, so you need consistency there. And the other is if, if there's something in our campaign mm -hmm. that uh, comes up, I expect our caucus to vote in solidarity with that issue because we campaigned on it and mm -hmm. I expect them to, to deliver on it. So otherwise you're like your MLA is to be dedicated to the riding That's right. specific and issues. Yeah, and there's been issues in the past uh, where we voted differently. Mm -hmm. You know, I voted one way and Rick and Michelle maybe voted another or, or whatever. And that will continue forward because to me, that's the way democracy is supposed to work. That's mm -hmm. what I think people need in their legislatures is people that can stand up for them over the party. Mm -hmm. Then your supporters have grown mm -hmm. in, in what I would say like a quick amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about how you gain support and, and what that journey has been like for you? Uh, a lot of grunt work, <laughs> if I can put it that way. Um, you know, early on we didn't have the, the, the big engine, you know, that the other two parties obviously have. But what we did have was a desire to break away from the two major parties, to offer an alternative uh, to people. I, I do believe that most people not just provincially, but I think right across the country, most people are pretty cynical and fed up with, with just the two main parties. Mm -hmm. They want a different perspective on things. Um, and, and, you know, here in New Brunswick, that's what we wanted to bring to the table is to say, you know, in some issues, you know, we, we you may be a little more right-leaning on other issues. You know, we may, may look to the left a little bit, but we try to find that area where, you know, how is this going to benefit or hurt New Brunswick, whatever the issue is, mm -hmm. and then, you know, talk to people, see what people are saying and what they're feeling and, and actually represent that in the legislature. How do you think our minority government is working with the Green Party having three seats, the People's Alliance having three seats? Do you think mm -hmm. that actually has turned out to be something that's beneficial for New Brunswickers? Oh, without question. Um, and, and in so many ways. It's, it's not just about, you know, bills that are presented and whether they go forward or not. Um, but it makes the governing party have to work with someone else, mm -hmm. right? So obviously the PCs are governing now and, and the option was that, you know, they could work with the Greens or the Liberals. Mm -hmm. um, now the Greens and Liberals have basically made it clear over the last year that they're not too interested in, in really sitting at the table and, and working through much of anything. We had the same option. We could have said, well, look, we'll, you know, just oppose everything they do and, and not get anything done. But I said, you know what, I think New Brunswickers deserve more than that. Mm -hmm. and, and not only that, but we have policies and ideas that we want to push forward that people elected us on. So we've taken that approach to say, mm -hmm. look, let's sit at the table of government. Let's look at uh, what they're doing and let's have some, you know, tangible input in what they're doing. And, and as well, uh, you know, I have to say, for the most part, 
you know, w um, we, we do see eye to eye on some issues. Mm -hmm. You know, when they talk about balanced books, mm -hmm. I said, you know, we can't keep running deficits. We can't keep spending money and expect our kids to pay for it generations down the road. You know, we have to do our part now, make sure that we balance those books. So, you know, on those issues, we're, we're, we're eye to eye mm -hmm. on, on some, but then there's others where we would differ. Um, you know, the spraying, herbicide spraying would be one. Mm -hmm. You know, we've taken the stance that, you know, we, th we believe it should end uh, on Crown land. Government doesn't think so. Um, you know, so there's going to be differences, mm -hmm. and what we got to do is meet meet in the middle, right. and, and that's what makes minority governments good. It's it's different views meeting in the middle and giving the best outcome for New Brunswickers. Do you think compromise is an underrated thing in politics? I, uh, sadly, I think it can be because I think it's you know for too long in politics it's been you know uh, our way or the highway because mm -hmm. they've only operated under majority government, so mm -hmm. that's just the way the system was. I mean. If if the, the the Tories were in power, the Liberals would oppose. If the mm -hmm. Liberals were in power, they'd do the same thing the Tories did when they were imposing it, and and back and forth it would go, right? So, this brings a different light to it, um, and even things that people don't see. I mean, mm -hmm. you see what goes on in the legislature because there's public viewing, but we regularly meet in committees. I sit on mm -hmm. several committees myself, so we take bills, we take motions, whatever needs to be debated. Mostly bills will come to the committee, uh, and we can poke holes in the bills, see what, mm -hmm. what's good, what's not good. And before, in a majority government, the majority government controlled the committee mm -hmm. based on numbers. So committees back then were really a rubber stamp, right? Government wants to do something, send it to the committee, committee rubber stamps it, off it goes. Now, it's actually the opposition parties that control the committee, so there's mm -hmm. no more rubber stamping. Right. Now it comes forward, it's gonna get due diligence, and if it's good, it'll go forward with recommendations possibly, if not, you know, we can recommend against it. I've heard you call yourself the purple filter in the legislature. Yeah. Um, do you find that you don't always get the fair media representation for some of those things that you do get the Conservatives to compromise on? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, that gets frustrating. Um, you know, and, and again, you know, to be fair, the government's been good to work with, the minister's been good to work with, the premier's been good to work with, him and I have developed a good relationship. Uh, but again, we don't always see eye to eye on things. And, and there's certain areas of bills or things that are brought forward that, that we have offered significant input to change the outcome of the legislation. Mm -hmm. um, one is, uh, you know, we discussed today at our rally, um, the nursing home workers bill, mm -hmm. Bill 17. You know, we took a lot of heat of that from the, from the QP union leadership. Mm -hmm. When you talk to the members and you explain our input in that bill and what it means for them, they understand. Mm -hmm. But the problem is you're dealing with a leadership that frankly is disconnected with their members so you're fighting with them on one hand, but on the other hand, you're trying to get to the members themselves and say, you know, this is actually what the bill originally said. This is what the bill says with our input, and it's opened up the, the opportunity for the arbitrator to see more than just one set uh, of parameters. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it opened it up for the unions as well. Can you talk to me a little bit about what your relationship with the media, the mainstream media, is like now? I know in 2014, mm -hmm. um, CTV, specifically shut you out of debates, mm -hmm. um, along with the Green Party too, but they said they only had room for three parties. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that that kind of a relationship, do they still see you as someone they don't want to include? Do you feel your coverage is fair? Um, it's getting better, I, I will say that. Um, and I know, you know Steve Murphy, uh, CTV, has you know, talked to me on a couple different occasions. I have a lot of respect for Steve. I think he always asks you know, some pretty tough questions, and I'm okay with tough, as long as it's fair to everybody. Mm -hmm. Um, but I was disappointed, you know, in the last election. Yeah, that was very frustrating to say, okay, you know, we, we knew we were going to be gaining seats. We didn't know what the outcome would be. We kind of predicted a minority situation. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, so why are we not at the table? Like, like, mm -hmm. you know, just let the public hear our views. You know, if they agree or disagree, that's up to them. But when you're not even included, mm -hmm. that's that's very frustrating. And then you have, I, I believe, if I remember correctly, the NDP was part of that. Mm -hmm. um, and again, why? You know, mm -hmm. the, you know, they they uh, had no seats in the legislature at that time, and uh, they don't today. So obviously, their effect wasn't wasn't that big. So how, how you know what formula do you use? And now the question, I guess, for the next general election, whenever that should mm -hmm. come, is what formula are they going to use then? Mm -hmm. Is that a problem in New Brunswick across the board that there are a few entities that control everything in a lot of ways? So mm -hmm. that. There isn't always fairness. Well, and, and but I think that's where you know government ha has to play a role. Mm -hmm. and they have to say, you know, I, I'm not against big industry. I, you know, I, I think everybody has to play a part in this province. You we talk about the private sector, you need mm -hmm. private sector growth, 
and I think that's going to include, include a lot of small businesses. I don't think they get enough support and credit, uh, but there's going to be a certain element of big industry that's going to be part of that. Mm -hmm. I'm not opposed to that, but what I am opposed to is government allowing certain industries, whatever they may be, to do things that are not in the best benefit of New Brunswickers, whether it's taxation, uh, uh, regulations around environmental concerns, or whatever it is, there has to be, government has to stand up for mm -hmm. the people and, and not always bow to, to big industry. Is that why, for instance, I guess the Irvings tried to send you a check, um, but you sent it back? Do you we, believe we, that you shouldn't take uh, donations? The, the, well, back then it, it was legal um, to take donations from corporations. Mm -hmm. Today it's not. So that was a good change that was brought in. Uh, but we did receive a, a check from uh, from you know uh, that organization, and again it wasn't it wasn't to slight anybody, but it was to simply say, look, um, for us we want to do what we can for the people of the province. We don't want even the perception that we're somehow bought and sold, you mm -hmm. know, by by anybody. So let's let's just keep it pure and and uh, keep moving. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that's been reflected in your representation in the media? Irving does obviously control a lot mm -hmm. of the media in New Brunswick. Have mm -hmm. you felt any kind of backlash from something like that? Um, I can't really pinpoint anything in speci you know, specifically relating to that, um, you know, but at the same time, you know, you, you do kind of feel that uh, you're not getting maybe always the fair shake mm -hmm. in, in the media that, that sometimes you deserve. And of course, I'm biased, right? But at the same time, and, and that's why I've, I've always, you know, gravitated towards, you know, um, like yourself, what you folks do here, uh, whether you're a blogger or, you, you know, you run a YouTube channel, because what we're doing right now is, is unedited for mm -hmm. the most part, right? I yeah. mean, you're, we're having a conversation, the people are going to see what, what I'm saying, what you're asking, and, and we go forward. But, you know, obviously mainstream media, they've got to edit diff different parts, and that's mm -hmm. what gets frustrating, because you feel things are edited that you really wanted out there mm -hmm. that didn't get out there. I suppose if people know one thing about People's Alliance, they'll bring up your stance um, on languages in, right. in New Brunswick. Mm -hmm. Do you feel, first of all, what is the actual stance of mm -hmm. the People's Alliance, and do you think it sometimes is looked at in the media as something that's anti-French? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because again, they want to paint a narrative, right? Mm -hmm. It's not about just getting the information out, it's about painting a narrative that people can think a certain way about you know, whoever they're talking about. For us, it happens to be that issue. So I knew back in, uh, I think it was 2012, where we called out for an end to duality. Mm -hmm. And what duality is, is two separate systems. It's a French system over here and an English system over here. You know, uh, our children can't ride on the same bus. French kids only on the French bus, English kids only on the English bus. Mm -hmm. Like, I oppose that. I, I don't agree with that. Uh, hospitals are no different. You know, you've got one hospital over here that's Francophone, another hospital over here that's Anglophone, two different administrations, you know, two different health authorities. And that's costing us as taxpayers, but it's also costing us socially because it's mm -hmm. it's separating and, and, and not allowing for that integration of our, mm -hmm. of our people. Now, I understand the Francophone perspective. They said, we don't want to lose our culture. I get that. That's why it's important to keep, you know, uh, uh, you know, if it's a Francophone hospital, keep that Francophone hospital in Francophone areas. But the administration of it should be one. You should have one health authority, same with school busing, one school bus where it can work and, and, and bring our kids and, and our people together. Um, can you tell me a little about your accomplishments as far as paramedics go and mm -hmm. where you've gotten in the legislature with that? Yeah, paramedics was a big file for us. Um, you know, there's many reports um, going out in the past about long wait times. Mm -hmm. Nobody should have to wait 40, 45 minutes for, for an ambulance if one shows up at all. That's unacceptable anywhere in this province. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. So early on after the election, uh, we made it very clear that uh, we wanted language to not play a part mm -hmm. in, in the hiring of paramedics in full-time work. Whether you're a Francophone paramedic mm -hmm. working up north or you're an Anglophone paramedic working you know, in, a, in an Anglophone area in the south, language shouldn't play a part. And so what was happening was we had paramedics that were you know, years of experience, seniority, qualifications, doing a great job. Mm -hmm. But because they weren't bilingual, they weren't able to get permanent full-time work. Mm -hmm. So one thing we did with the government, we pushed hard for the gov with the government on it, is to make sure that they now get permanent full-time work. So now paramedics that are either unilingual French or unilingual English, they can receive permanent full-time work. Uh, because before, I mean, you can imagine going on a six-month contract as a paramedic, and you've done that for five, ten years. Um, you can't get a mortgage, mm -hmm. you know, it affects your ability to where you locate, uh, all kinds of issues around it, it's just not fair. Yeah. So that was a good change. A uh, second change we made more recently was a paramedic's desire to leave CUPE and, and go to a different union, to get reclassified. Okay. To make sure that 
you know, paramedics are treated fairly and that they're classified where they need to be. I mean, the paramedics today are not the paramedics they were in my father's age, mm -hmm. right? I mean, God bless them, but back then they had first aid, CPR, and they drove an ambulance. Mm -hmm. Today, that's not the same. Today, they are professionals. Um, you know, they have, you know, significant training. They are medical professionals, and that's what we said. Classify them as medical professionals and put mm -hmm. them in the appropriate union. So that's what's rolling out now. Do you think it's more of a restructuring of bilingualism for the province? And if so, how do you see it benefiting all of New Brunswick? The only thing we're saying when it relates to bilingualism is, is apply some rationale to it. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're not saying that there shouldn't be bilingual positions. Of course there needs to be bilingual mm -hmm. positions. You know, for example, if you're working in an area of Moncton and you're, the province is providing service in an area like Moncton, mm -hmm. which kind of has that 50-50 sort of demographic, yes, you're, you're going to need a higher threshold of bilingual uh, people there. If you're talking about centralized services where calls are coming into Fredericton, then you're representing all of the province, yes. But when you talk about, you know, like a, a small service in New Brunswick, or you're talking about, uh, uh, you know, uh, whether it's hospitals or whatever, there, there, there needs to just be a little more step back, and right. let's not be so rigid about this, yeah. and let's look at it based on the demographic. Is the need there? Mm -hmm. If the need is there, fill it. And if the need is there, can you use a team approach? Yeah. If you've got 10 people working in that department, uh, do, can one or two of them speak right. the language? And then, you know, rotate or whatever, you know, get that team approach in there. Do you think there's other impacts that our current approach to bilingualism could be having on the province? For instance, I'm thinking, does it maybe stop some people from wanting to relocate here for jobs? Oh, for sure. Well, I know what it's doing most definitely is it's causing people here to leave, Okay. right? Because, I mean, we hear, especially in getting back to paramedics, advanced care paramedics, um, all of those positions are bilingual mandatory. Mm -hmm. So you have advanced care paramedics here that are going to Nova Scotia mm -hmm. or they're going anywhere else to, to, to practice. Um, and it's not just paramedics. I mean, you could go through the board. I even hear, unfortunately, from nurses that face the same thing, that it's, you know, it's la language becomes an issue. Mm -hmm. And I just don't think in, in, in our state as a province that language should be that big of an issue. Um, again, apply some rationale to it. Mm -hmm. um, the federal government seems to, in some ways, do it better because they base it on where numbers warrant, whereas New Brunswick, you know, doesn't have that option. It's just right across the board. Right. Can you tell me a little bit, too, about another what some people might say is a controversial stance on glyphosate use. Mm -hmm. So our party um, campaigned quite hard uh, last uh, 2018, I keep forgetting this 2020 here, uh, a couple years ago about uh, yeah ending herbicide spraying on Crown land. Mm -hmm. So our position hasn't changed. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the Liberals put forward a motion to study the issue. Well, my feeling is that issue's been studied enough. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you just got to take a stand on it one way or the other. So, but they want to kick it down the road and study it. Uh, the Greens, to their credit, put forward an amendment to that motion, you know, to ban it. And when the vote came down, we supported the Greens on mm -hmm. that for, for an outright ban. And again, it's the ban on Crown land, mm -hmm. right? So we're not talking about private uh, land or homeowners or this sort of thing. We're talking about, you know, aerial uh, aircraft going over and spraying massive amounts of this uh, throughout the forest. Th you know, and the question really comes back to, you know, who, who owns the forest? Is it industry or is it the people of New Brunswick? And if the people of New Brunswick overwhelmingly say, we don't want this sprayed in our forest, government should respect that. Right. And is there research? I know that some of the research, for instance, that the government was using to justify spraying was actually done by Monsanto, who is the creator of gly glyphosate mm -hmm. in the U.S. on top of that. Mm -hmm. um, do you think there are going to be more initiatives to do proper studies? I hope so, and, and, and I hope, again, um, that it's a balanced perspective mm -hmm. because, you know, sometimes you can, you know, sometimes get industry a little more top-heavy on that mm -hmm. and you don't get a fair perspective of what the issue is. Um, so one good thing, I think, that may come out of this committee that was struck is it hopefully will open the doors to other viewpoints. And I'm mm -hmm. not talking about viewpoints that, that aren't science-based. You know, I mean, there's all kinds of anecdotal ideas out there, good and bad. We want the science. What does the science really say? What have the studies really been done? Have they been peer reviewed? Is there significant, uh, uh, you know, input there? And, and that's why I'm proud that Rod Cumberland is a part of our team, you know, running here in St. Croix because he brings a lot of that to the table. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think he'll help advance that. Um, in a province that Irving and MB Power, who also spray glyphosate under the lines, mm -hmm. um, are big power players in everything. Mm -hmm. um, how do you have a view like that and make it work? Well, when you talk about MB Power, for example, okay, so you got the power lines that are being sprayed. Well, there's, there's no reason that you can't have 
uh, men and women out there with thinning saws mm -hmm. doing civiculture the way they used to do before. Thin the power lines. Uh, there's machinery now, you know, that, that can help in that effect. So you're not, you're not, you know, spraying the herbicide on, on MB power lines. And, and we, you know, the same thing with industry. We have to look at it and say, okay, what, what, can, it, what can industry do that doesn't involve herbicide spraying to make, sh to make sure that, you know, they can continue to get the lumber they need, uh, but not have the effects of the environment and the concerns of people in, in the background. Is it hard to be a politician in a province that has a power like Irving in all aspects? I think one in eight New Brunswickers works for Irving. Mm -hmm. um, to get things done when, when that could be the motivation behind what gets in the media and also who supports what parties? Yeah, it, it's it's a struggle, um, you know, but again, you have to look at it, you know, from a broader perspective. I mean, Irving is a player, but there's other companies there too. You've got the forestry industry, which as a whole employs 22,000 people in this province. Mm -hmm. And when you live in a province that's Canada's poorest, 22,000 people employed by the private sector is pretty big. Right. So you have to work with industry. You, you can't, I mean, pe some people say to me, you know, just go out there and, and, and get rid of it all. Well, Let's be realistic, you know what I mean? You gotta make it work. What, what worries me is sometimes when you get the bigger players in, the smaller players get shoved out. So we've gotta find a way too that the allocation is there for the smaller mills that want to take a, uh, make a go of it and have that same opportunity so you're not just focusing on one entity for, for wood allocation, but you're opening it up for others as well. Why do you think the People's Alliance has really resonated in New Brunswick and your support continues to grow? I, I honestly think because it's, it's, it's an underlying uh, feeling among the public that they haven't been well served by the traditional parties of red and blue. Mm -hmm. and, and I think it's justified. I think what, what has happened for too long is we've had parties that have governed uh, based on just agendas and not really representing the people that they govern. Um, and, and, and this is what we want to bring to the table, is this new way of thinking mm -hmm. that if you elect an MLA, that MLA represents you first. Mm -hmm. Not the party first, you first. And, and again, there has to be some stipulations, there's got to be some guidelines around that, mm -hmm. I, I don't deny that, to keep stability in government. But it's become so over the top, where if you're a liberal MLA, you always vote liberal lines. If you're a conservative MLA, you always vote conservative lines. It mm -hmm. leaves nothing open for the people caught in the middle. How are you finding people such as Rod Cumberland to join your party? What do you think speaks to them about you? Well, I, I think, again, I think it's this, this kind of concept that you know we're here to represent the everyday people of the province. Um, we're, we're not bought by anybody. You know, We don't owe anybody anything. We're, we're simply here to say, what do we think? and what is the people telling us is in their best interest. And, you know, there's always that challenge because being in government, of course, <laughs> one thing I know is when you get in the legislature, there's more information coming your way, right? So you've got all kinds of information now at your fingertips mm -hmm. that you can look to and you, you kind of see, you know, some different angles that you hadn't seen before. But on the same time, you know, you do realize that there are people in this province that are not being fairly represented. Mm -hmm. and and. That's what I believe we bring to the table is to say, and I've told, you know, um, Rick and Michelle in my caucus, uh, MLA for Fredericton, York, and MLA for Miramichi, I said, you know, if it's not a confidence motion, if it's not something we campaigned on, and to be honest with you, most of the bills have nothing to do with either one of those, I said, I want you guys to, to be able to, to vote, go to your people, talk to your people, and vote accordingly. Mm -hmm. That's the way democracy in my mind should work. Yeah, the by-election in St. Croix mm -hmm. will set New Brunswick history and might determine yeah. This is a big one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was it important for you to come out to support Rod as he launches his campaign? Oh, 100%. It was a, it was a great rally. There was nothing that pleased me more about the rally uh, than the fact that we had to kick out a wall. You know, they had those dividing walls. We had to take the wall out, put more chairs in to accommodate the, 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 the huge crowd that we had. So very encouraging to see that. And again, I think it just shows that, that people are ready for something different. Mm -hmm. And uh, St. Croix, the whole province is watching this place. And so, rightfully so. I mean, um, you know, we've always said if, if you want government to continue and have stability in government, uh, vote People's Alliance because we are here to, to provide that balance, right? Stable government, but yet holding government's feet to the fire and getting our input there when we need it. Uh, because otherwise, if you go uh, red or green, the whole province is going to be in an election. Mm -hmm. So basically that would be a general election for all of New Brunswick. So everybody's watching this mm -hmm. writing very uh, closely, very intently. It's, it's, going to be, uh, it's going to be an intense by-election, I'm sure. From where you started to where you're at now with three seats in the legislature, mm -hmm. how, do you feel 
how much your muscle has grown? Do you feel that from other parties when they're negotiating with you? Do you feel you really do have a strong presence in New Brunswick? Well, we, we certainly do. There's no question, especially in the minority situation. And again, the Premier and I have had many private conversations. We talk on a regular basis and we talk about the issues that New Brunswickers are facing. You know, he lets me know what his thinking is. I let him know what my thinking is and we try to meet somewhere in the middle on that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what this is all about. Um, and again, I had the choice early on to sit with the opposition and just complain about everything government did, but you, you're never going to get anything done that way. So you have to find that compromise. Things you like, go with it. Things you don't like, sometimes you have to swallow, but that's, that's the way this is supposed to work. Um, but yeah, as far as the influence, I think we have a significant amount of influence. And, and again, I, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's working with the government that you've got to work with and, and uh, doing it for New Brunswickers. For my final question, just for people who still might not be as familiar with the People's Alliance as they'd like to be, um, what are your core values and why should people vote for you? Well, as I said, free votes are a core value. Our, our MLAs can represent the people they, that, that, that elect them. Uh, you know, things like uh, ending duality, language, you know, uh, um, common sense language policies. Uh, uh, you talk about, um, you know, again, fair representation, taxation is a big thing. We've been very strong in the double tax. We want to see the private sector grow in New Brunswick. The private sector will never grow in New Brunswick if we have this continued taxation policies that we have here. We need comprehensive tax reform. Uh, I'm, I'm optimistic, cautiously optimistic that the government is working towards that. Um, you know, they're, they're doing some studies and, and trying to figure this all out. Uh, but we've got to get in line with the rest of Canada because right now we're way over tax and the private sector simply won't invest here. So we've been big on tax reform, big on free vote, big on language issues, health care, education, all of these issues. Uh, we've put in our platform things that we fought for and uh, we're going to keep fighting for them. Thank you so much for joining me today. Great. Thank you. Appreciate it. I hope you will come back. Yeah, absolutely. Anytime. Southwest Magazine is a news and public affairs production of CHCO-TV, New Brunswick's only source for independent community television.